Right, Knock? Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine, thanks. So, Dr. Steele, you know we've been doing this series on what's on people's desk, and I wondered if you would mind sharing with us what's on your desk. No, not at all. Which which desk would you like? This desk <laughs> you, or over here? You have or multiple or? desks. I um, do, yes. You know, when I see you hunkered down, usually it's over on this desk over here. So yeah, is this yeah. desk okay? Yeah, that'd be great. So, so most of you know that Dr. Steele is Executive Chief Clinical Officer, which means he's over all things clinical, which means he wears a million hats. And pretty sure that his desk is going to show us that there's a lot going on in that head of his. So am I good to look at anything here? Absolutely. Okay. Whatever you'd like. Okay. How about flu cases? Well, this is actually a report that we get weekly from the Kansas City Health Department as soon as the flu starts, right. uh, which is typically uh, in the late fall. And uh, this actually shows uh, flu over the past several years. And the yellow line that's here is the flu this year. So you'll see that just in the last couple of weeks that we actually started to see a little takeoff of the number of flu cases okay. here locally. Is and that any indication? Does that mean it's going to be a slower year when it's starting out that low? You know, or? it's really hard to tell because you can see here back in 2016 and 2017, it actually was a late takeoff and actually was a pretty high peak, but it's unlike last year, which is this purple line where it really took off in the beginning of December. And right. then that was actually one of the highest uh, flu seasons that we've had here recently. Okay, interesting. We're going to keep going. So I know that patient safety is something that is a priority of yours. Talk to me a little about this report. Yeah, this is a, a report that we roll up monthly, and it's basically looking at our hospital-acquired conditions. And so things like CLAPSI, which is central line-associated bloodstream infection, CLAUDIs, which are infections related to catheters, falls, uh, pressure ulcers, surgical site infections are on this list, uh, C. diff and MRSA bacteremia. And so we've been following this over time, and this, these are our December numbers here. And so in some things like stage four pressure ulcers, we've gone nearly a year with no stage four pressure ulcers, which is very good. But then in some other areas like C. diff, we end up having somewhere between three or six cases per month. And so we're working hard to try to uh, reduce those. Other areas like MRSA bacteremia, we've only, we haven't, haven't had an MRSA bacteremia for the last six months, and so that's another really good trend that we have. Also, we've been seeing a decrease in the number of falls, and a lot of work has been going into falls. And that's been a focus those. for us. It has been, yeah. Okay. So I know you're keeping an eye on this, looking for trends, and as are your leaders. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, we're all very focused on this. Okay, so this is um, throughput, or left without being seen? Yeah, yeah. So we have a, a, a throughput Committee that meets monthly. It's multidisciplinary, and we've been very focused on improving our throughput through the emergency department. And so here at Health Sciences District, you'll see that originally we had a goal of 5% or less. And so for the last year, we've actually met that goal uh, almost all the time, with the exception of last January when we had a really high flu month. And then this, this current fiscal year, we've actually reduced our goal to less than 4%. And you'll see that for the last few months, we've actually been less than 3%. So we're really proud of this and the work that's been done. A lot of people have helped with this, the, particularly the emergency department, Dr. Grattan. Uh, Dr. Hackman in the emergency department and the nursing staff. You should as well. be impressed with that. That's impressive. I mean, when you are looking at that trend, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that back not too long ago, we had double digit left without being seen, which right. we were very proud of. So we're, we're very happy with that. Uh, the other thing that we've worked on is uh, the uh, uh, time that it takes to, for a provider to see a patient mm -hmm. once they present to the emergency department. And so you'll see that uh, a lot of times that we were over an hour that so a patient could present and it would take over an hour to get to them. But now with uh, having a uh, what we call a provider at triage, which is typically an advanced practice provider, they actually are there when the nurse checks the patient in and they can get the, the care started immediately. And so our goal, once again, was less than 30 minutes. We just recently reduced that to less than 20 minutes. And you'll see we pretty much have been hitting the less than 20 minutes here for the last six months or so. Wow. So obviously throughput is something that you work on all of the time. Absolutely. Okay, so I see a lot of resumes here. This is sort of peak recruiting season for us in an academic medical center, so all the uh, current uh, senior residents and fellows are about to graduate at the end of this uh, fiscal year, and so they're all looking for jobs, and we have a number of areas that we're recruiting into, Department of Medicine and Family Medicine looking for primary care doctors. We're also looking for some specialists, including cardiology, pulmonary, endocrinology, 
and then uh, also an OBGYN recently. So what's the key? What does it take to get a great doctor here? If you're gonna, if you're gonna have a successful recruitment period, what, what are you trying to tell people? Well, I, I think the key for us is that, I mean, we really focus on what our strengths are, which is I mean, obviously taking care of the underserved and also uh, education. And so a lot of people are attracted here because of our educational mission. And so uh, I think that's a big, a big factor. And then also the leaders. We have a lot of really great physician leaders, and so people are attracted to those individuals and to the departments and the people that they work with. Okay, that makes sense. I think we're running out of time. There's much more here, but oh, I'm going to stretch for this one. Uh, this looks like it is a neonatal services agreement. Yeah, we just uh, re-upped our agreement with Children's Mercy. Uh, as you know, the children's uh, physicians, in particular the neonatologists and the pediatricians, provide care in our NICUs both here at HSD and at Lakewood. And so this is a very important agreement for us. They also provide the neonatal nurse practitioners that provide care in-house 24-7, 365 at both HSD and Lakewood. So they're an important component of our mothers and babies program. So I always tell Dr. Steele, I have no idea how he keeps all of those plates spinning that he does. And this is just an example of some of those plates that he keeps in the air. So thank you for your time today. Thank you.